overall structure, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, Connor actually noticed that children with autism have larger heads, and indeed later on, much later, that was returned to, and a simple tape measure really gave us um, a lot of information about the fact that, hey, you know, these the children with autism do have larger heads. So this study um, by Korchesny and um, colleagues showed that there was a small head sum circumference at birth, but rapid head growth between 6 and 14 months. And then, indeed, macrocephaly, or large head, was found in about 46% of children with autism. And another study showed that there was a disproportionate increase in white matter as opposed to the gray matter. So all of a sudden they're saying, wow, there's rapid head growth. Wow, their heads are larger. Wow, they have more white matter. So let's look into the white matter um, that this has become um, a strong source of study lately. Um, what we've realized is, if you'll pardon my very simplified explanation, is that the gray matter that holds the information for children with autism is usually intact. Not always, but um, mostly intact. So they can store and hold um, amazing amounts of information. However, the white matter, which um, provides the communication between those circuit boards, um, that may be where the problem lies. So um, they can store information, but when we do things in our brain, rarely is is any one part of the brain the only thing that we use. So for instance, if we're reading, we're using our visual cortex um, when we're looking, but we're also making connections to language in the temporal lobe, or we're connecting to experiences and memories about things that relate to what's going on and making associations. So we're using incredible parts, um, many different parts of our brain at one time when we're reading. We may even be looking at a, at a picture, and, and that brings in even more parts of our brain that are lighting up. So when children with autism are reading or doing something that has that interrelatedness needed, that functional connectivity where the white matter has to connect many areas of gray matter in the brain, what they're seeing is that's not as efficient. So it's postulated that the white matter grows pretty normally until about nine months, not in all children, but in many. However, by two years, excessive white matter is found in several areas of the brain. And those areas are the frontal lobe, which is responsible for executive functioning, and we're certainly going to talk much more about that. Um, cerebellum, which is responsible for sensory ear issues and alerting kinds of issues, sleep regulation, and associative areas such as the corpus callosum, which is um, actually what they used to say is it, te it tells the left brain what the right brain's doing and vice versa. It's a lot more complicated than that, but it is an associative area. So the individual circuits may be intact but the cables between them are not, are not. So sometimes because of the crowding, they may go where they're not supposed to go, or they may go nowhere, or they may go um, where they are supposed to go sometimes. So you see in certain areas of the brain where there's an excess of a white of amount of white matter and it's not been pruned. So when we are first born, we're able to speak any language. So um, we're kind of an open vessel innately ready to acquire language, but if no one speaks to me in German, I prune those areas of my brain that have the ability to learn those sounds and make room for more efficient pathways in my native language or languages. So what's happening in children with autism is they're not pruning, and so there's a huge amount of crowd of crowding and efficient pathways are not being developed and in fact maybe some are not being um, seen at all. What we also know about overall structure is that the brain shows signs of chronic inflammation in those same areas that show excessive growth. So what this means is that 
um, the immune system within um, the nervous system is inflamed in those areas that have more excessive growth. They don't know whether this is a good thing or a um, bad thing really. They're not sure whether this inflammation is protective or destructive. Um, however, if you'll, you've been a teacher of children with autism for a long time, you'll often realize that um, right before they get very ill, it seems like, wow, they're doing so many neat things and then they'll get really sick. Um, so it's possible that that inflammation is the body's response to try and make those pathways um, make connect more connections, um, but we don't really know that yet scientifically.